Okay, let me start. Oh. So, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, I'm Akira. I'm from Japan. This is my first time visiting this country, Malaysia. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I found that people in Malaysia are so nice and welcoming, actually. I, I found this sign at the airport, so um, yeah, thank you for having me. And I really love the way you spell the word restaurant. <laughs> you spell it like this, restaurant, right? Is this correct? Okay. So, restaurant. That's exactly how we pronounce restaurant in Japanese. <laughs> so, I, I really love you, Malaysia. <laughs> uh, anyway, <clears throat> I heard this is the second Ruby conference in Malaysia, right? And so, I would like to tell you, I, I would like to tell you, Malaysia, welcome. Welcome to the Ruby community. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but what is the Ruby community? How can we join the Ruby community? So please raise your hand. If you think you're already in the Ruby community, please raise your hand. I think not everybody here. For those who raised their hand, I'd like to ask you, why? Why do you think so? What makes you feel like you're in the Ruby community? So I would like to tell my story. In my case, the key is the language, the, the nature of the language. Um, I used to be a Java programmer before, before I started Ruby. And when I was a Java programmer, I never felt like I was in the com Java community. I was just a Java programmer. But Ruby was different. Ruby makes us, makes me, made me feel like I'm in home. So when I was a Java programmer, I was never felt like I was, I was in the community. But when I started Ruby, I became a Rubyist. I guess this is the key phrase, and this phrase was actually um, made, created by Matt himself, the language designer. Matt designed the language to make the pro programmers happy, and also he defined the word Rubyist. So the word means um, not just <coughs> a Ruby programmer. The word actually um, defined 20 years ago at a mailing list post here. Uh, I guess you cannot read this. It's in Japanese. Um, <laughs> so in, in this post, he, he defined the word Rubyist as something that is not equivalent to Ruby Hacker. Ruby Hacker is uh, a person who is very good at programming Ruby. He's skillful at Ruby, but Rubyist means uh, someone who's, uh, who has a positive feeling towards Ruby and who wants to do something for Ruby. Right? For example, um, tell your friend that Ruby is good you, you should try Ruby. If you say this to your friend, then you are a uh, Rubyist. So it's very easy to become a Rubyist. You already know Ruby is nice. Ruby is a good language, right? So just tell your friend, tell your family, or tell your like, co-worker that Ruby is good. Then you're a Rubyist. It's very simple, right? So this way, Matt's designed Ruby, and he, he made the word Rubyist. I think this is how he created a language and its community. 
Okay. Now, is Matt still actively developing Ruby? The answer is yes. He's still making decisions on the red mine, the bug tracker, and the developer meetings. And he's still, so he's still the lead designer of the language. But if we look at the project repository, this is his most recent commit to Ruby. <laughs> he just bumped the version to be 2.5 last Christmas. And the second recent is, uh, again, bumping version. And the next one, he defined the Ruby version to 2.4 two years ago, again, at Christmas. And the next one is another Christmas, three years ago, for 2.3. And, and another Christmas, 2.2. <laughs> and another one for 2.1. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a wrong image. Anyway, so he's really, he's just like a version H bot <laughs> in the Ruby repository. <laughs> then, then who's actually writing Ruby? Matt himself answered this question three, three weeks ago in Japan. Um, it's on this page, there's a video, but um, again, this is only in Japanese, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, in this session, he, he stated that Ruby is not, not his language, no longer his language. It, um, he said, it's our language now. He said, Ruby is developed by the community effort, and um, he showed his gratitude to the community. Thank you, the community. So, the answer to my previous question is that the community is creating Ruby, right? But which community is it? Well, the community is called Ruby developers, Ruby community com committers. So this team is developing the lang language. Are you right? Um, with like nearly 100 people. But not everyone is active. It's you know, the language has a long history and maybe um, currently active core member is like 30 or 40 people, I guess. So anyway, this is the team. And actually there's no complete list of the, the members. There's, you can find there uh, on GitHub, but it, this actually doesn't include everybody. Like. Even Matt is not in the list. So anyway, there's 30 or 40-ish active communities, and you can meet these people at a conference named Ruby Kaigi. At this year's Ruby Kaigi, there was a session titled Ruby Committers versus the World, and we had 40 Ruby communities on stage like this. These are all Ruby communities in blue shirt that I'm wearing. So this team includes me here. <laughs> so again, let me introduce myself. I'm Akira, and I'm a Ruby committer. So this is the community creating Ruby. And in this picture, you're you can find very, very, very important people for Ruby. For example, the release manager, 
there and uh, the VM author at the right at the right end and the patch monster there let me let me talk a little bit about the patch monster um, if you take a look at the numbers like this number of commits this shows the number of commits to the Ruby repository 2485 and if you take a look at the number of commits per person here it is this shows that the total number of commits are 2,400 or something and Nobu, just one person makes 1,000 commits and the second one is a bot so <laughs> um, he's, he's committing almost 50% of Ruby right and so he's called the patch monster or patchamon for short <laughs> and this guy is patchamon <laughs> right so this is how ruby is created next how about ruby on rails who are creating rails if you take a look at the we official website here, at the bottom it says, um, our large friendly community. There's a link to the community page. And if you jump to the community page, it says Rails is made of people. So, so Rails defines the community as a uh, uh, people who are making, making rails, right? It says our community made rails. And again, I'm on the community page as a member, as a rails committer. So, um, unlike Ruby, Rails has a complete list of commit authors to the repository. like this you see Aaron's at the second yay <laughs> so this is the URL of the website contributors rubyandrails.org and there are nearly one, uh, 5,000 people in the list so this shows the attitude of, of the Rails team the Rails team really welcomes everyone's contributions, right? So who, who here are on the list? Raise your hand. If your name is on the list, raise your hand. Okay, uh, some people. Okay, that's great. So if your name is in the list, you must be in the Rails community because the community is creating Rails. So, welcome aboard. <laughs> welcome to the community. Um, this shows how Rails is made. Rails is made of the power of social coding. The phrase social coding is, of course, created by GitHub, the sponsor of this conference. Social coding, for me, uh, social coding really changed my life. No, not only for participating in the Rails project. Also, when I created Gems, social coding really helped um, developing my gem. GitHub brought so many contributions from from the uh, gem users. For example, in Kaminari's case, I guess this is my most popular gem that I've created. In this gem's case, I got, we've got so far uh, 127 contributors. And in fact, I do not know all these people. Like, I only know like 20 or 30% of the contributors. 
So I get so many like bug fixes or feature requests from people that are, I don't know. This is wonderful, right? This is, this is amazing. I really love this. So this is me. I'm on GitHub as a Matsuda, and I create gems there. And Ruby. Ruby also decided to follow this social coding trend. So if you want to get involved in Ruby development, if you want to do something, please just send patches. And I'm going to explain how. I know, I know contributing to Ruby is very hard. Sending patch to Ruby is hard because it's still on subversion. And you need to create a account for Redmine first. And uh, you need to like make a text file, like get format patch or something, and attach your patch file to the ticket and create a ticket. Right? This is hard. So we we decided to move to GitHub somehow, but we're not not moving the whole repository at once, but we're, we're jamifying some built-in standard libraries like WebRig or OpenSSL, etc., or like file, u file utils and TK, like this, and to make everyone easy to contribute to these gems. So if you take a look at um, Ruby's repo here, github.com slash Ruby, you'll find so many standard libraries. These are like accepting pull requests from you. So if you want to contribute or if you just find bugs on these libraries, please just send pull requests. It's very easy, right? Also, I'm organizing a conference in Japan. Um, recently, one American guy wrote a blog post about that conference. He described that the conference is um, heavily focusing on technical talks. Right? But we, we're designing the conference not just to be technical, we're aiming to we're aiming to connect the c communities, the Ruby core and the rest. I mean the Ruby users. I mean these people and these people from all over the world. You see, we've got so many attendees from all these countries from the world. So, I believe that. I believe that code is the best way to communicate between these like different countries, different cultures. We can communicate in Ruby, right? So that, that's why we focus on technology, on Ruby especially. And another goal of Rikaigi is that we want to develop Ruby. I mean, we want to push Ruby forward. So these are big three topics on R Ruby community recently. We're, we're working on like these new things for Ruby 3x3. Three three. So we had many talks regarding these topics in order to share our ideas and implementations for like types and concurrency to make Ruby better. This way, Ruby Kaigi is aiming to be an event that drives Ruby development, right? And if a development project like Ruby is driven by an event like Ruby Kaigi, that's called event-driven development, okay? So Ruby Kaigi is doing this. This is the reason why 
I organize Ruby Kaigi, and um, I'm very happy to see like um, other conferences like this Ruby Conf Malaysia, um, uh, like emerging. I mean, I'm very happy to see new conferences like this. It shows that Ruby's still alive and still becoming gr big and big. I'm really happy about that. So I'm, this is me again, I'm the organizer of Ruby Kaigi. So, so that's it. Um, so I'm concluding this talk with a message for you. Everybody, let's code. <laughs> to code is to communicate, I think. So please express yourself in Ruby code and not just write code, please push the code on the internet so that we can read your code. I think Ruby is the best language for doing this activity because, because Ruby is a human friendly language. It, it's very easy for the code readers to read. So if you're willing to join the community just start communicating with other Rubyists in Ruby. Right. So find something and um, um, and work on that. Actually, you can do this. You can join the community from Malaysia, physically being here because the community is here. Here, I mean, the community is on the internet. You're already connected to the internet, right? So, you can push your code to the world, right? So I'm hoping to see your code there on the internet. And if you're, uh, if you're working on something, and if that makes Ruby better, you'll be a member of the Ruby community, right? So, again, welcome to the Ruby community. Okay, thank you. For some Q and A. All right, are you guys. Uh, we have like five minutes. You can ask Akira anything that you would like. Okay. Um, hopefully about the talk. Uh, any questions from the crowd, please? Yep, Nick. Okay. I have. I have. Uh, this may sound like a, a rude question, but what's the reticence of moving Ruby to GitHub? Because that seems to me like the universal communication hub of coders. And SVM, although awesome in its day, uh, feels a little bit antiquated. Uh, is there a rationale? Okay. Um, in my understanding, I, I personally love GitHub, um, but in my understanding, uh, the biggest reason is that GitHub is a commercial product, and some like open source developers don't like that. Don't want to um, create an account on GitHub and um, don't want to like use that service because it's, it's commercial. Uh, so I know a few Ruby communities who, un who, doesn't want to, who don't want to use GitHub and I know some Ruby communities who are saying that if Ruby is completely moving to GitHub, I'll, co I'll quit the team. So I guess that's the main reason. It's that's a very difficult. Yes, thank you. That's, that's very honest. Good, answer. good question. Any more question, guys? Anyone? Your only chance to ask Akira on stage. I'll ask you a question. So, what made you want to contribute? What made you want to start contributing? 
so like you you coming from like a, like a close uh, communities like a job community and a PhD community. So what inspired you to like commit even more? Um, okay. I started using Rails relatively um, very old, okay. like version before 1.0, I think. Yeah, okay. So um, at that time, Rails was really, really buggy. I, f I found so many bugs. I mean, I hit so many bugs. And I started using Rails in production for my customers. But um, I, I hit so many troubles because the framework was bu buggy. So, I needed to fix the bugs. Sure. So that was my first step. Right. I mean, um, I just hit bugs. I just fixed bugs. Right. And I pushed them to upstream. Yep. That was the start. Okay. So I didn't really want to contribute to anything. That was my right. job. Right. right. So this is my advice. Um, that's the easiest way. So um, please find bugs. There are so many bugs. Still, still, there remain so many bugs in the world, and you should be hitting bugs every day. So, be aware of the bugs and don't hesitate to fix it and like push it to the upstream. That's a good one. Any more question, guys? All right, that's it. Another warm welcome.